We're here in Uji. Uji is famous for two things in particular. Do you know what they are? I know one is green tea, and the other one is that it's the location where the oldest novel in the world took place, the tale of Genji. So we're gonna see if we can try and look for a few of those signs. Let's go. Already right as you exit the main Uji Keihan train station, you can see Tsuen, which is the oldest tea shop in Uji. I believe it was open in 1160 and is now on its 24th generation of ownership. We're not going there today, but still something interesting to check out if you're in the area and you don't have much time and you're by the train station. It's Monday. It is Monday, which means that the Tale of Genji Museum is actually closed. But otherwise, if you like novels, the Tale of Genji is the oldest novel in the world. It's written by, I believe, a lady who is one of royalty, and it's an exceptionally long and very gossipy novel. <laughs> I tried reading a little bit, but it's about a boy named Genji who is pretty much born perfect, with perfect skin and perfect face, who is exceptionally talented and beautiful and very smart and very athletic and all of that. It was, it was basically a gossip novel, but it, it, was, it was fun to read if you don't mind wading through a lot of very long words. If you want to know more about it, you can come and check out the museum. Unfortunately, we can't show you what's in there because I didn't plan for you. <laughs> but yeah, it's here. It's very interesting, I would think. It looks like a very nice museum from the outside. Details will be in the article. Fascinating. This is a free tea factory about 10 minutes walk from Uji Station. It's a museum. It's a free museum of tea. About 10 minutes walk from Uji Factory. Uji Factory. The museum video plan is completely in English. All the information here is in English, so it's really easy to understand. If you're a fan of tea, it's a great place to come to. It's not a huge museum. It's virtually only one room. It's more of an exhibition than a museum, but it is still very interesting, especially because it's free and it's here. It is very informative as well. Stairs is closed on Mondays. Where are we going? We're going to the Pyodo in Omote Sando, which is basically the nice old street outside the Pyodo in Temple where you can get a lot of souvenirs. There's also plenty of tea houses. You can expect that in Uji, where they produce a lot of green tea, there's tons and tons of souvenir shops for green tea and tea houses where you can enjoy some matcha desserts and matcha. Mm. They're like egg roll cookies for the green tea cream in the outside. Inside. They're like colons. You know colons? <laughs> Don't call it colon. It's basically a colon. It's like a tubular thing with stuff inside. <laughs> We're here at a butcher called Hariyoshi, very close to the Uji JR station. But it's not just the butcher, they sell croquettes, which you can either buy unfried and cook it yourself at home, or they will do it for you. This place is special because we're in Uji, so they sell one thing that is quite unique. That's Uji Matcha Croquette. It's a potato croquette in which they have mixed in matcha powder. Let's give it a go. Uh... Mm. 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 It's a bit of a shame. The matcha flavor is not strong enough to really taste mm -hmm. but otherwise it's an amazing croquette it's super delicious 
The best croquettes are definitely the ones that are fresh out the fryer mm. and this one is perfect. It's so crunchy on the outside, tender, mellow, fluffy and piping hot in the middle. The first thing you get is the sweetness of onions. Just a little savory as mm. well. I think I do get a little bit of bitterness from the matcha. But in terms of the flavor, if I closed my eyes and took a bite out of it for the first time, I don't think I'd be able to identify the fact that there is green tea in here. Would I get it again? Yes, definitely. Undoubtedly, for sure, I would get it again. Mm. I would also like to try the other mm. croquettes as well. They've got corn, uh, ham, tonkatsu, beef katsu, all of that. But would I say it's a good green tea croquette? Ooh. Possibly not. But still super, super delicious. There's a lot of places in this area that sell green tea soba noodles, which is what we've come to this restaurant to try. I don't know if this one is more special than the others, but um, it's one of the ones that we came across and it seems pretty busy, which is why we decided to try it. We got two things. One is a cold dipping soba and the other one is nishin soba, both with green tea. Soba is a Kyoto specialty of herring, braised in sweet soy sauce, and put on top of soba noodles. So we decided to give two specialties a try. I have the hot soba noodles. Let's try the soup first. Mm. It's flavored mostly with dashi. It's got a light fish flavor. And it's also really well. Let's try the noodles. You're really good at slurping <laughs> I tried very hard. It's a bit foggy, unfortunately. No flavor of green tea that I can particularly tell. But it's absorbed the broth quite well. Whether or not it's a green tea noodle, it's quite tasty. But as a green tea noodle, could do with a bit more green tea as per personal preference. I'm gonna try the fish. Harry. It's quite tender, more so than I expected. And it's really strong in salty sweet flavor. Heavily braised and very tender. And very flavorful. I can tell that each of the components are really well made. Let's try the cold noodle. Cold soap. <laughs> the noodles are flavorful. I think we may have come to the right store, but. Maybe they all taste like this. It doesn't taste particularly of matcha. It's not even bitter at all. In terms of the noodle, it's pretty good. The, the sauce is quite nice. It's very light, a little bit fishy. I think it's also a dashi. A dashi with soy sauce. So it's a little sweet, savory, and salty. But you really can't taste the matcha too much at all. Otherwise, it's really tasty. Let's eat because they're about to close. It was a very rushed lunch since we came right at closing time, which was our mistake. But it was surprisingly tasty, mm. like for a restaurant that we randomly walked into. I'm quite happy with it. Mm. The noodles aren't super fantastic. Mm. They don't really taste like matcha, but everything else is so, mm. so good. The broth is delicious. It's not over seasoned. It's not too salty or sour or too overwhelming at all. And it's also got an amazing umami fragrance. Mm. We can recommend this shop at least for the broth. If you want to try Nishin Soba, this one is really delicious. Time for dessert, huh? <laughs> right on the corner of the main road, you can find a sweet shop with dango. One skewer is 90 yen. It's got four little dango, so let's try it. This is our, our first dango in Japan, huh? It's not soft. It's more like a chewy, boingy texture. Am I low-key disappointed? You're yeah. quite high key disappointed. I gotta be honest. It's quite sweet. Very, very faint matcha flavor. If you. I'm so sorry. Mm. Okay, the matcha flavor is there. But the texture is like it's old, right? Mm -hmm. The starch has undergone some retrogradation, which means it's no longer as soft as it was. Almost like a, a soaked marshmallow. It's okay. For the price, okay, I accept it. But otherwise, I wouldn't buy another one. I'm sorry. That's okay. We were so disappointed we came to another dango place. This one has three kinds of dango on one skewer for 140 yen. That's one and a half times more. Which means it should be one and a half times better. <laughs> it has matcha, pochicha, and read the kanji for the last one. I'm gonna assume something like tencha, tencha, I'm not sure. Let's give it a go. 
Mm. Yeah, it is more stretchy. It's not as soft as I expect it to be. No, but it's got an incredibly strong tea flavor. Mm. And it's not as sweet. It's more herbal. Let's try the next one. The tea really is a lot nicer. I like the first one better. Mm. The tea definitely comes through. Mm. This one is so much stronger. Mm. You can taste the bitterness, really. I like that one more. This one tastes more like herbs. Grassy. Grassy. Each to one's own. I think this one's the whole tea. Wow. Mm. What I like is that this one went from light to dark down the skewer. So you obviously had a specific order which you should eat it, and it was a good one. The thing that I'm assuming is that the other one has more sugar because sugar uh, prevents it from hardening too much when it's a bit older. So it's probably acting as both a preservative and a texture preserve. It is. I guess so. This one has less sugar. It's definitely a lot less sweet. So it's probably, since it seems like an independently owned shop, it seems to be possibly made fresher. It's still quite sweet, mm. but like a good amount of sweet. Mm. Something we, that you could drink with tea. Mm. We definitely recommend the 140 yen one over the 90 yen one. It's at least one and a half times better. Mm. Byodoin Temple. It's the one that everyone comes to. But we don't film inside temples because it's not a respect thing, so there you go. How much is entry fee? Probably like 400 yen. Matcha chocolate milk. It's filled. Something this in is filled. That's really amazing. It's quite sweet. But the matcha is so strong, it's so bitter that it, it's nice how sweet the chocolate is. We are here at Shea Agata, which does a few specialty things. Of course, we're in Uji, and that means matcha. So we got two tea desserts. The first one is a Swiss roll using green tea, and the second one is a creme brulee using hojicha. I actually think the Swiss roll is frozen, and you're supposed to let it come to room temperature eventually, so we might actually package it away and try it when we get to Nara. But we'll try the hojicha brulee now. It's freshly brulee. I thought it was just the pudding at first. Let's try it. Cheers! Cheers! Mmm! -hmm. The top is perfectly crunchy. It's so sharp and so thin. They brulee it perfectly. It's not hot, but the top is crispy and it's just it's got a little bit of caramelization, caramelization, which makes it nice and I think pairs well with the slightly bitter hojicha flavor. It's got a few burnt patches, but I think it adds to the bitterness a little bit too. It's not bitter in a bad way. And that is incredibly smooth. Mm -hmm. Really milky too. Mm -hmm. You can taste milk, like very good quality. It's more like a, a thick, Smooth but not too rich cream. Like a very smooth, very smooth custard with hojicha flavor rather than a pudding, like a set pudding texture. Mm. Unfortunately, I think if you eat too much of this, it might be too sweet. Mm. But I would not mind eating too much of this. I wasn't expecting too much from the creme brulee actually because I think their specialty is the hagata roll, which is the roll that we've got. Honestly, delicious. Mm -hmm. I went back inside to ask if we could keep the cup or we should return it and I think she said we could keep the cup. She even offered to wash it for us and she wrapped it up for us. So that's not, really nice. Yeah, not only do we get the brulee, we also get a very, very nice ceramic cup. So, <laughs> recommend. Highly recommended. I mean, the brulee is delicious. So you should definitely come here if you're Gucci. Um, also saying, there's nowhere to eat inside. It's not a it's not a cafe, it's it's purely to take home or you know sharing it. We have a single little table to sit at. You can hear the rain if we're outside. <laughs> we're outside. The rain. So the cakes are as I mentioned are frozen. So you can take it with you home, keep it in the fridge maybe for another hour or two and then it should toughen up for dessert later. And that's that's what we're gonna do with the green tea Swiss roll. We have made a huge mistake. We've reached our accommodation and the cake has been a couple of hours. We actually had dinner before and 
yeah i think we left it for way too long maybe we should have put it in the fridge rather than left it out at room temperature but now it's like this big globby mess that we can't exactly pick up but that's okay i'm gonna try it anyway yeah we're just gonna shove our faces straight next to it it looks good it smells amazing it does it's gonna be so messy though mm. Mm -hmm. The cake's not as soft as I thought it would be. It's more like, you know that really soft like Asian bread? Kind of, but more of a cake texture. Mm. Like that firmness, but more of a cake texture. Mm. Mm. The cream is definitely, it's cream. It's not ice cream. Mm. And it's not like butter cream or anything. It's, <laughs> it's so good though. The matcha is so strong. But it's not too bitter. I think they sweetened it really, really well. And it's not too sweet. Mm. I think also the texture of the cake stands up well to the, the mm. thickness and the smoothness of the cream. Like it's not too light. Any lighter and it would have like the whole thing would have fallen apart. It would have been a big soupy mess. But no, it's good. This is good. Highly recommend. Anything from that patisserie slash cafe would be really good. That has been our tour of Uji. Mm -hmm. It's a great day trip if you're going from Kyoto. It's only about 40 minutes from the main Kyoto area and it's not too expensive either. And I think you can take both the JR line and the local line. If you are going, Monday is okay but we found that a lot of the shops were closed. A few of the souvenir shops shop, yeah. as well. I think that's more common with Asian places as well where they don't tend to have weekends but rather they have the day after the weekend. So just a heads up. We're back at home and we're gonna try the uji matcha curry. First we went off and cooked some rice. Then and we heated up the curry. You can do it in a microwave, just put the whole pouch in there. Or as we did it, you can slip the whole pouch into a pot of boiling water and heat it through for five minutes. Let's try! Woo! The first thing I noticed I think is it's really green. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's very accurate to the packaging. But the first thing I noticed was that it smelled exactly like Indian curry. But like, yeah. not the real one. Like, the stuff they sell in Western countries. Mm, I can see that. It's really sweet smelling. Mm. I'm not really getting much of a green tea unless I really think about it. Just like looking at it, I instantly think it's like a spinach curry because of the color. But it does smell quite nice. Let's give it a go. Cheers! Mmm. Mmm. Mm. There is a distinct bitterness in the curry, and that's probably from the green tea. Otherwise, you can't really taste green tea itself. Like, there's no discerning green tea flavor besides the bitterness. Your typical Japanese curry, it's Lightly spice, but you can taste the spices. Very creamy. Just a little bit sweet, mostly salty otherwise. Quite savory. I like how smooth it is. Mm. The chunks in here are like potatoes. It's a little spicy, but like enough for Japanese people to think it's spicy. I don't personally like the bitterness, it just stays. Overall, I think it's quite tasty, but just the bitterness just keeps going. Even now, it just makes me a bit although noms is a little more um, susceptible to bitter flavors i find it's okay for me it does linger but in the same way that tea lingers if you drink enough of it mm -hmm. it's not astringent though no but it's still there it's just there besides that the ingredients are pretty basic it's stuff like vegetables meat um, spices onion and ginger so i think the actual amount of green tea isn't that much Mm. The green tea definitely comes out more if you eat it, but it does mostly come in a slightly vegetably bitter form. It's not potatoes, it's a chicken. There is chicken, there is also potatoes. It's a very well cubed chicken. Mm -hmm. I don't like it on the second bite, to be honest. Mm. The green tea and the curry flavors don't mix mm. like it's supposed to. I think like how cocoa powder is sometimes added to food to season it, the green tea could have been bitter if it had been balanced, but in this case, they just dumped a whole bunch in there to make it more uh, the flavor rather than a seasoning. But I'm really glad that I tried it, first of all. And I would sometime like to try making my own. Overall, any regrets for you? No, I don't think so. I think 
one. Huh. Now, otherwise, would I eat this again? I think I'd just be happy with a normal Japanese curry for a cheaper price. But it is definitely something interesting to try. Mm. And a great souvenir. Mm. Otherwise, everything we ate and did in this video in Uji, you can find the information in our blog, which will be linked in the description below. As to where we are now, follow us on Instagram at twinspeakeatgo. We'll see you next time. It's the one that everyone comes. Ah, ah, it's the one that everyone comes.